Hi guys, my name is Lee Rogers and welcome to this, the fourth episode of Crank Punk Rides, my YouTube channel, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pair of cycling shoes that have come all the way from China, which is not too far, seeing as I, I live in Taiwan. And they were so cheap, I decided to take a chance and see how they looked and see how they rode. And they arrived this morning and they're right here, so I'll give you a quick look at them. There you can see, the brand name is Speed, I don't know what actual product it is because there's no information to that. They've got the boa style there and this shiny nylon sole. Now we'll take a look at those a little bit deeper in a moment. But first, let's take a quick look, and this is mostly for beginners out there, but let's take a quick look at what you need to be looking for in a good cycling shoe. Number one, stiffness. The stiffer the sole is, the better is the rule because a soft sole will absorb the energy that you're putting down through your leg and into the pedals. So that means you're going to be going slower. So in simple terms, stiffer equals faster. And number two is comfort. Now riding anywhere in an ill-fitting shoe is not fun at all. You want no rubbing on the shoe, no general discomfort, you don't want any hot spots. So getting that comfort right is really important. Number three is the price. Now, if you want to get a pair of shoes that match the criteria of comfort and stiffness, you could be paying a lot of money. Anything from 200 US dollars up to 1,000 US dollars for Mavic's top of the line shoe. Or you could go crazy if you wanted to and go for the Adam Hansen Special, the handmade shoe that costs a whopping 2,000 US dollars and takes about 40 hours to make. Paying more generally means that you're getting better quality, so they're going to last you longer. So it all depends on how much you can actually afford to pay. So I got a message on my phone this morning telling me that the box was down at 7-Eleven, the local 7-Eleven. So I went down there, grabbed the box, brought it back up, took off the outer wrapping and greeting me was this. A Union Jack box. How did they know? Me being English, uh, I wonder if they do that for all their customers. But that kind of gives you an indication that this isn't really a high-end brand or even a medium brand. It's kind of a shoe from China, probably from a manufacturer. And this is what we get. So bearing all that in mind, let's take a look at this shoe that I received today. Now, it's not a bad looking shoe actually. Um, the crazy thing is the price. This was 28 US dollars, which is about 20 quid, I guess. And it doesn't look that bad. Um, the outer shell is nanotechnology, which is supposed to help with odor and what have you, and to be fairly water repellent. It's quite shiny. So the idea with this is that it shines up at night, I guess. I've got the lights on here so you can, you can see the shine there. But yeah, it feels a little bit greasy, but um, it's quite soft. It's not very well supported around the back in the cup, but again, you know, 28 US dollars, what do you expect really? Now, the buckles here, as you can see, they're boa-like, but they're not actually boa. So it's a cheap version of this fastening system that most of us will probably have in our shoes. Um, it works quite well, clicks on, clicks in. I haven't actually tried it on the road. One thing that I did notice is that the cables here, they're a little bit thinner than you'd normally get on a higher end road shoe. I've got a feeling that over say three weeks or a month of wear, that's gonna be one of the issues that is gonna come up with this shoe. Now, before we go out, I want to show you just for reference what an expensive pair of cycling shoes looks like. And these are my beloved Lake CX402s. They're in pretty beaten up condition, but I mean, look at that sole. That sole has been around. I've been to war in these things, lots of races. It is a fantastic shoe. They're about six years old. So you can see, that's what you get with a quality shoe. With a quality shoe, you're looking at quite a bit of money. These are about 530 US dollars, but they've lasted me. You can see even on the toe, it's still in really good condition. The sole is so tough that although it's scratched, there's not a crack or anything in it. The cup on these, the carbon cup was all the way up to here. So unlike the issue with the other shoe, which is quite soft and has no real internal support, these are absolutely, you know, welded to your feet when you put them on. They're so good at returning the power that you put through the pedals. The only issue is that walking in these is a real pain in the foot because uh, they are so stiff. And this is what you would expect for paying that kind of money, which is, it's very expensive, no doubt, but it's five years, it's almost six years in these shoes. So uh, yeah, they've been really good value in that sense. But that's the shoe that I'm coming from. And today, this is the shoe that I'm going to. So. Let's see how that goes. Right, let's get out for that bike ride. Well, I'll tell you what, it is a glorious day in Danceway today. There's my house over there, the big green ones. Look at that cloud. 
Glorious, glorious, glorious. Okay, so there you are. You can see the shoes in all their glory, all their shiny glory. Um, yeah, I do feel sort of around the ankle that I've not got much support there. But from the point of view I've got, they look okay. You can see the material kind of being slightly deformed by uh, the fastener and the, uh, the tension in the cables. And the sole, I can feel the sole a little bit, I can feel the thinness in it, but I can't feel the pedal like I said before, there's no hot spot. And I think you can see if I just bring the GoPro around, you're going to see a bit of shadow, but you can see the shininess there. They're super shiny. I, I don't know, I kind of like it. Not my usual style, but kind of swanky. You can see there the sort of the way the material is being deformed a little bit. And here we have that cable I was telling you about. I don't think I've ever seen so much cable. Looks like I'm going fishing. And actually, it sounds a bit like I'm going fishing as well. Um, so yeah. Like I say, the only issue for me is that they feel so soft. I mean, I actually feel like I'm wearing a pair of slippers because the sole on those lakes is so stiff. To go to these with that one inch or even maybe even more, the flex in the sole. Um, yeah, really soft. And also the material around the foot as well, that feels, that feels like it's got no structure to it. It feels like I'm wearing a nice pair of slippers or, or maybe a nice pair of slip-on dress shoes. Like if these were a pair of moccasins, I'd be pretty happy with them. Okay, what we're gonna do is try out a little sprint. Oh, jeez, oh, I'm getting too old for this. Well, watch out, pigeons. Come on, I can definitely feel a loss of the power. Um, it's nothing more than you'd expect from a really cheap shoe with a soft sole. There's a lot of shoes that are made by other brands that come with a soft sole. More expensive than this one. Uh, so I've only done about 10 kilometers today. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep on riding. So far, very first impressions. Looks pretty good. Still a bit soft around the ankle. And I can feel my toes sort of squidging around as well. A little bit too much space down there. The sole I'm definitely feeling, but not too much on the bike because the contact point is where the, the pedal platform is. So you don't really feel too much, but you can feel because of the lack of sport around the ankle as well and around the, the heel, your foot is kind of squirming around. But again, you know, it comes back to the price. These are 30 US dollars. And I think, well, I don't think I know because I, I just calculated it earlier. I'm not very good at maths. But I think for 550 US dollars, it's 18.33 of these pairs of shoes you could get. So one pair of my lakes equals 18 and a third pairs of these. But you know, it's true that you can save money sometimes, you can cut corners and sometimes it works out. But generally, I think as we all know, there's a time and a place to pay for quality. And I think with cycling shoes, you get to the point when you've been riding for a while that you really do need a good pair of shoes. But beginner level, beginner entry and for the price, I mean, so far, um, they're not terrible. They're not terrible. But I'll be doing some more riding over this weekend. Um, I'm gonna try and get in about 120K more in these shoes and we'll find out how they're going. So day two, the big ride. And I'm out with these two fellas here. And this is Jake, Jake and Heinz. Jake and Heinz. And we're heading up one of the very uh, famous and super popular hills just outside Taipei on the way up to Yamishan called Fang Weizhe or FGZ and uh, trying out new shoes. And Jacob here is gonna be trying to get a PB, so we'll see him at the top and see how he went. All right. There he goes, allez, allez. Actually, again, I keep saying not as bad, but they're not as bad as I expected. I'm not really putting in full gas today. The movement's still there. You won't want to do too many big rides on this kind of a shoe. And if you were going to do a hill climb against someone as fit as you, which I'm not fit right now, it sounds like. Yeah, you'd be losing time if they were wearing really good shoes. 
and you were wearing these shoes for sure. Woo, nice ride. So that was our little ride up Fungoid's Way. Unfortunately, Jacob didn't manage to beat his PB today, uh, not because of lack of willpower or, or power, but because of lack of chain, <laughs> because his chain broke about 500 meters into the ascent. And I shouldn't be laughing, but it was quite funny, and I'm sure he's laughing too. So better luck next time, Jacob. So let's sum up these $28 shoes. If you remember earlier, I talked about three components to really good shoes, which was stiffness, comfort, and price. So in terms of stiffness, these shoes are nowhere near what you're looking for in a pair of good cycling shoes, far too soft. In terms of comfort, super comfortable. If you're looking for a nice pair of slippers with SPD capabilities, then these are your shoes. Price, we're talking 28 US dollars, plus $12 for shipping to Europe or the States. Um, super cheap. I mean, you can't beat them on price really, so on price, they definitely win. Now, would I recommend these shoes to anybody? Well, it's kind of a yes and a no because uh, they're super cheap. They look pretty good. They come in different colors. They've got the, the shiny ones that I've got. They've got red, they've got white, they've got black. They actually look pretty good. If you're in any way a serious cyclist, then these aren't the shoes for you. However, if you're someone just starting out and you've been riding in tennis shoes without the SPD clips and you're thinking about making the transition, but you're not sure about it, then this is a good option. You could be paying 60, 90, $100 for well-known brands starter shoes, which have a similar level of softness and a lack of stiffness in the sole. But if you buy these, you can try them out. And if it doesn't work, it's $28. It's not a great deal of money to have lost. So if that's the position you're at in your cycling, then I recommend these. And then the other point is that they are super cheap. They look pretty good. If you've got a whole bunch of different cycling kits, if you like to wear different color socks, if you like to match all the time, um, if you're just riding around town, riding on the bike path, then these shoes are absolutely fine. I thought I would be ripping these shoes apart, literally, and also in this review, but actually just as a functional cycling shoe, they work. Now I need to state this is only two rides. The legs have lasted me six years. I doubt that these would last more than six months with any serious riding. You know, but I keep saying it, they're not terrible. They're not great. They're not even really good. They're not even that good, but they're not terrible. And so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please press the like button and the subscribe button. That would be great. They're down there at the bottom somewhere. That would be fantastic. The next video in line is a trip to a Belgian guy who lives here in Taiwan. And he's not only a very passionate and very good cyclist, he's also a cycling designer. And I'll be meeting him to find out exactly why he designs the products the way he does. He'll be giving us a pretty in-depth look as to what goes into making a cycling product. As ever, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you again soon.